right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and we're going to get right into it, man. I would like to drop a gym star, but I can't do it today, so I'm just wearing the shirt, man. Work hard or shine bright a gym star, man. I got to put these in the store. I got to get my boy Jay Nelson this shirt. I got so much to do. We're going to get that done today. Look here, man. I want to do all my stuff, but I'm not me today because I have a bad crook in my neck, a bad crick in my neck, whatever. Mama call it a crook, grandma call it a crick. I don't care what it is, man. Listen, from right, if, imagine this is my back. So from right here to right here, I got like a, that's how my muscle is, like a straight fist. I can't look down. I can barely look, I, I can look this way and I can look this way and I can look up. But when I come to looking down, like this is about as far as I can go, which sucks because I work on computer screens all day and it's just going to be a challenge for me. But it is what it is. If y'all have any natural remedies for the crook in your neck, crick in your neck, whatever you want to call it, let me know, man, because I need one quickly. What is it? Somebody, I know somebody going to put witch hazel down there. With us, with, that, with my folks, witch hazel solve everything. Put some witch hazel on it, baby, and it'll be all right. Or some testing. Don't tell me no witch hazel or no tussin, cause I know that ain't gonna solve the problem. Maybe, maybe, maybe witch hazel will though. But no, grandma, you say witch hazel tussin or cod liver oil. I ain't trying to hear none of that stuff, man. Maybe I just need to relax and go get myself a good massage or something. I don't know, but it is what it is. Also, I think some people had had everything mixed up the other uh, yesterday. I put up a Call of Duty video. A lot of people watched it. A lot of people liked it. But this is the thing. I'm not going exclusively to Call of Duty content. But for at least the month of January, I will be putting up Call of Duty every day. And depending on how you guys respond to it will depend upon how do I keep going forth with the Call of Duty content. So this is going to be all on y'all. If y'all didn't watch that Call of Duty video yesterday, go back, watch it. 30 kill TDM, funny as hell, it is what it is. But like I said, when we get to the end of January, we're going to look back, we're going to reevaluate it. If it's not being supported, hey, we're going to have to forego the Call of Duty content. So if you want the Call of Duty content to keep on coming, just support it, man, and we'll keep it rocking. Anyway, speaking of supporting people, man, check this out. NBA 2K Toots. This guy right here, man, is a, um, this is a fellow that, uh, that, is, that has recently come along. And uh, I don't know if anybody's talking about him or or touting his name and stuff like that but hey every bit is good to every bit as good as the 2k lab videos if not better because they are a little bit more in depth uh you know he's got everything man he's he's pretty much right now he's going through all the badges i i, I look at him like a sam fam in the making almost right so you got you know, Tyler Shooter, is it trash, is it worth it? Steady Shooter. He did an excellent video on Steady Shooter talking about, um, you know, because I was talking to somebody in the chat about Steady Shooter and how it impacts you. And really what he said about Steady Shooter is they tested it out, went through it, looked at it extensively. And if you can't put it on Hall of Fame or at least gold, if you don't have the badge points, to, a, to, to push toward, like you got 30 badge points, by all means put it on. You got 17 like me, you ain't got no business putting it on because you're not gonna be able to get it up to Hall of Fame. So the, the gist of it was with Steady Shooter, you're going to take, you take a penalty for having it on bronze, like a 5% penalty. Now 5% doesn't seem like a lot, but when you look at the fact that you get a 5% increase on your shot for turning your shot meter off, and you see how many more shots you make when you turn the shot meter off versus when you make it, when you turn it on, 5% happens to be a lot in 2K terms. So if you're taking a 5% hit with it on bronze, but you're gonna hit more, more contested shots, you put it on Hall of Fame, you take little to no penalty when you take a wide open shot. But when you take a, uh, when you take a, uh, a covered shot, obviously the penalty is less. So what he's saying is if you have the badges to dedicate to it, by all means, do it. But if you don't, you ain't got no business putting it on. Somebody like me with a 73-point shot, I ain't got no business putting it on. Unless I can put it on a uh, Hall of Fame, but I'm not going to dedicate four badges to putting it on Hall of Fame. And all I take is open shots anyway. So steady shooter's not going to help me. If you take bonehead-ass shots and you... And you and you know you 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 routinely take covered shots or you routinely take contested shot because what he dis, what he discovered is that the badge activates if a person is they could they don't even have to challenge the shot they just gotta be in your area then the badge will activate right but I don't take shots like that so it would not benefit me you understand what I'm saying 
I don't doubt the fact, because I was talking to somebody in the stream the other day, I don't doubt the effectiveness of it or that it works. But what I'm saying is, I don't take contested shots intentionally. If I took a contested shot, I'm either gonna pass out of it or I'm just gonna straight smoke it because something went terribly wrong, right? I don't take enough shots that are contested for it to be effective for me. If it helps me one out of 60 shots, that's not effective to me. That's how many contested shots I take. One out of 60, maybe. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not doubting the effectiveness of it. I, I believe that it works. And just like he, he confirms, it definitely works. But if you don't take a lot of contested shots or if you don't take shots with people close to you, there's no need to put it on. Now, I will tell you this. If I had 30 badge points, would I put it on? That would mean that I'm a primary shooter, so I probably do take shots that are slightly contested and stuff like that. Yeah, I probably would put it on in that case because I got the badge points to dedicate toward it. But right now, I don't have those badge points. So if you don't have the badge points to dedicate toward it, there's no need in you putting it on. And like you said, if you can't put it on Hall of Fame, then you might not want to put it on at all. Anyway, he got tons of videos, um, you know, ab about all this stuff, man. Go check the guy out, man. Check him out. Um... Look at the videos, subscribe if you if you want daily, good daily 2K content, not the trash posting that I do. And uh, you know, keep on rolling, man. Dude's a good dude, seems like a cool cat, and all that good stuff, man. Up next, man, yo, 2K. Let me holler at y'all real quick, man. Listen, man, this is what we got right here, man. This is NBA 2K Intel. They put this out there, and they're just like, look, I go to Tycino, I go to Tycino's Twitch, and he's having a meet and greet. This is something that's just ridiculous, man. And we talk about the toxicity of the 2K community. And like, this is where it begins. This is the least toxic thing that the 2K community does. I seen somebody else, bro. Somebody was telling somebody they, they would they would they would urinate on their family member's tombstone. What? Bro, like, hey, look, I, I understand that you can ignore that stuff, man, but hey, I can't get mad at somebody else if they don't wanna if they don't want to ignore it. But yo, this stuff right here, this is the this is the babiest of the toxicity. This stuff been going on since 2K16, man, especially when people would sit in, click in on the court, knowing that they were going to slow the game down and make it just awful for you to play. And that's what people would do. But hey, it is what it is, man. Like, like look at Tysino. Look at the face. Tysino! Oh, you can't see Tysino right now. Hold on one second. Tysino! Tysino with the look of disgust. <laughs> Tysino, one of the favorites. Tassino! Tassino with the look of disgust. Look at he just looked focused, man. He like, bro, I gotta, I, 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 it doesn't matter who's on this court. I gotta win this game. I gotta, I gotta, uh, I have to entertain the stream. I gotta do all this stuff, man. How, you know how hard it would be to try to entertain the stream and do all this stuff, man, with people doing stuff like that, man. Like all you're trying to do is, you know, make a little money, entertain your fans, and this, this is what you're getting. Like you, you ain't putting out. You only thing you putting out there, or you feel like you're putting out that good energy and all that good stuff. And uh, this is, this is what you're getting. 2K. I'm gonna need y'all to fix it, Felix. Like you, like look at this, man. Like this, like what? What is their goal? What is their plan? Like obviously, look the dude jumping around and all that stuff. Z gonna hit the shot anyway. Like it doesn't matter. But it's just like, bro, I can only imagine how annoying that would be to try to play, man. Speaking of things that are, I mean, so 2K, fix it, Felix. Can we get a fix it, Felix, down in the comment section, man? Also, 2K, something else we need y'all to fix. This stuff was sent to me by Big Boy IQ, man. Look, your boy shoot. Your boy shoot. Big legend shoot, man, in the chat. This is what he's saying, man. He want everybody to put the big legend shoot in the chat. Now, look at this. The rep level, oh, you can't see it, man. You can't see what his rep level is. Let me get my cam off. All right, he repped up, in this video, pretty much, he repped up the legend, man. And um, you can't, like, you can see that he, you can see that he made it to legend. It says legend 100%, right? But he didn't get his animation. Nothing happened. The only thing that happened is, I mean, he's legend. He big, big legend shooting the chat, but he, he didn't, he didn't get his animation. I would be upset. Now, I ain't, I ain't saying in the show right to get the animation that you're supposed to get. <laughs> get the animation or none of that stuff like that. But what I am saying is this. I 
would be upset because it's like, bro, how, if, if you don't get, like, like I said, shout out to Big Boy IQ for sending me this stuff, man. If you're not getting your animation, man, then it's like, what what are we doing this for? Like, I know you get the legend, I know you get the 10 points and stuff, but part of it is like a rite of passage. You need your animations, like when he pound the ground or when he punch through that thing and do all this stuff. Hey, it is what it is. But hey, you still get your 10 badges, you still get all your stuff shoot, so you're gonna be good, my guy. Um. It just sucks that we had we are, that we are this far into this game and things like this is still happening. We don't know why it happened. We don't know what causes it. Could be a glitch here and there, but I just think that people hit legends so infrequently that that can't be a thing, man. Maybe he got it the next time. Who knows? But uh, it is what it is, man. Up next, we got the shorts, man. We got the shorts, shorts, man. Check it out. Um, and I wish that I, I wish that I could show y'all that uh the other tweet, man. But look, it says, hey. My, uh, what's your my player rocking in 2020? Cop the just done in the neighborhood, man. And then you know you got your boy with the uh, with the with the short song. We got the uh, the jazz, the bulls and jazz shorts. And then you know on the front, I, I don't know what that is, boys, but it, it is what it is, bro. But look, will you be rocking those? I don't know if I'll be rocking those, man. Also, hey, man, we got Eric Spostra explaining what a max player is man what a max player should be y'all let me know if y'all if y'all agree with this real quick i, I just want to go over this real quick because somebody was talking about they're talking about a correlation between jimmy butler shooting badly and them winning and it's just like all right let's go let's, let's 11 and 2 when he makes five field goals or fewer um <laughs> the poorer he shoots the better you guys seem to play i know that's not what you want but do, do you have any concerns kind of about how he's shot the ball from the perimeter no I, I don't and Look, I know that that's what everybody will look to quite naturally. Uh, it, there's going to be ebbs and flows uh, with the season, uh, and that's certainly not going to be something now that we game plan, hey, try to miss a bunch of shots so we can win. Uh, but I, I think that's what young players should learn coming into the league of what a max player actually means. It's not about stats. It's not about, uh, you know, that final number on the box score. It's not about... Uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, 2K numbers you can get, uh, it's not. It, it's about how your team functions and are you winning because of a, a player. And there is no debate about this. Uh, he's having a, a, an incredible impact on our winning, on our bottom line, and that's why we chased him so hard as a max player. That should be the definition uh, from here on out, but it's not. It gets clouded. Uh, and too often it becomes about stats or people that can pile up a bunch of uh, uh, stats, uh, you know, even at a young age, but they're empty stats and they don't they don't impact winning. Mm. 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 I know a lot of people ain't gonna like that, especially them James Harden fans, man. Like a lot of people, like they talk about stats and stuff like that, man. And you got people that get the stats, you got people that get buckets and do all types of stuff like that, man. But look, man. At the end of the day, it really comes down to, are you helping us win? That's just it. Like, that's just all it is. Um, I, I think a lot of people get things twisted because I talk, I try to talk basketball with a lot of people. And if they didn't see somebody play, the first thing they do is go Google their stats and be like, well, he only scored 12 points a game. How could he be that good? And it's just like, do you understand? Like, let's say, let's take somebody like, um, we gonna take somebody like Michael Thompson or, uh, or something like that, man. Let me let me see. Let me see Lakers. Let's see. Let's see. I know the Lakers had. I want to say Michael Thompson was 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 a defensive player of the year a couple of times, man. Let me see if we can go back. Okay, here we go. Um, nope, he wasn't a defensive player of the year. Wow. Huh. That is weird. Hmm. Anyway, take somebody like Alonzo Mourning, man. Let's let's take him. Let's take Alonzo Mourning. We're gonna look at his career stats. Alonzo Mourning, career stats. Alonzo averaged 30 minutes a game, 17 points a game. Somebody might be like, well, you know, he couldn't have been that good. He only averaged 17 points a game. 
do you understand the impact that Alonzo Mourning had on games? Same thing with Michael Thompson, where he's going to take your best player out of the game, and then he's going to score 13 or 14 points a game. Like he's a, These guys are defensive players first. Just like Clay, somebody might look at Clay. I don't know what Clay's average are, averages are, but his impact on the game when he goes stupid or just taking the other team's best player out of the game, like stuff like that. That's what Jimmy Butler's going to do. So even if he's not scoring as many buckets as you would like for him to score, He's got people around him that's going to score, but he's going to take the other person's best player out of the game. Stuff like pass to assist is not a stat. You don't get the hockey assist and stuff like that. Like when you got players like that, like that, like we said, that's what a max player should be. A max player should be somebody that can impact the game in ways other than scoring. So if LeBron don't score 30 that night, a lot of times if they win, LeBron got 15-15. And, and like 10 assists, something like that. You know, he gets that type of triple-double. Stats, like, like that's why we talk about James Harden a lot. Like, yeah, James Harden gets a lot of stats, but those stats really don't help you come playoff time. Luka got stats. We we don't know if those stats are going to help come playoff time, but he got a better team. Trey Young got stats. Team ain't winning, but the team ain't winning for another reason. We just have an inferior team here. But a lot of times, people, that's all they know because they don't know basketball. They just know numbers on the stat sheet. So y'all don't watch games, so you really don't have any clue what's transpiring on the court. If you actually watch the game, like I was I was talking about Marcus Smart a couple of years ago, and and when, when the Celtics lost Avery Bradley, they was like, shoot, it don't really matter because I, I'm a Celtics fan, and I don't expect you to know this because you don't watch all Celtics basketball. But dude was like, Marcus Smart is every bit as good as Avery Bradley. He can defend more positions, and he's starting to hit shots. So we're going to be fine. And lo and behold, they are. That is that is what actually happens. Marcus Smart is the primary defender on the on the Celtics for the last couple of years. He's starting to hit shots, and he was able to take up the slack for Avery Bradley just like that. So you can't just look at the stat sheet and 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 think that that's the only thing that goes to winning. Defense is 100% effort. Effort cannot be quantified, nor can it be taken down on the stat sheet. So you can't worry about stuff like that. Jimmy Butler is a max player. What, what Eric Sposter was saying is Jimmy Butler is a, is a max player regardless of if he scores buckets or not because his impact on the floor, his leadership, his his defensive uh, prowess, and just all those things. It's like the synergy that he puts together. Some of the parts greater than the whole, man. It's, it's like, it's like or, or the, greater, the whole is greater than the sum of his parts or what have you. The, what Jimmy Butler puts together on a nightly basis is something that that can't be quantified by the stat sheet, man. And hey, and that's that's a lot of players, man. A lot of players in the league, but because you can't quantify effort, people think that uh, you know, just because you can't quantify effort, then you you done. Anyway, up next, man. Last but not least, boy. Hey, speaking of not being able to quantify effort, boy. Boy, look at this thing right here. We got this video of Kendrick Perkins, little boy, man. They said this is the be the, the biggest eight year old out there. Look at him down there. Going up and down the court. Here I am. Woo, look at the crossover. Going to the rim. Lay for lay. Give me the ball. You can't dribble. Give me that jump ball, baby. Let's go. Who you think going to win that jump ball? Y'all let me know down in the comments. Look at the pass. Dime. Look at that. Break that. Give me this board. I'm going from coast to coast. Filet. Yeah, look at him walking with his chest out like his pops, baby. You know what time it is. Show him what's out there. There's a bunch of babies out here, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Tell him, little Kendrick. Hey, man. Little Kendrick hooping, man. But the only thing I hate about stuff like that, man, is because y'all y'all know how it is when you got players that's like way better in the, in those little baby leagues and stuff like that the parents try to always govern and be like he shouldn't be playing with them how your kid gonna get better you can't get mad because his kid good because he played in the nba and your kid trash maybe you should spend more time with your kid helping them get better instead of trying to ban them out of the leagues and, and inevitably it's always a little girl that plays in those leagues too and you know little girls develop and mature faster than boys like my little niece was way taller than everybody and she was playing with the boys and you know they try to ban her out the league because she was better at that point in time than a lot of the little boys were. It just was what it was because she's taller, she was faster, all that stuff. But it's because girls mature faster than boys. And then there's a break point where 
where you know they have to be in different leagues but at that age you really don't have the little girl leagues like that anyway it's always like that man i hate when they do that why don't they just let let's let the kids play if you get spanked you get spanked how you gonna get better if we keep protecting people from better competition the only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna mess around go to a d3 school and then you're gonna be like instead of getting better and, and pushing yourself to the potential where you could have gone d1 or something you're gonna be stuck in this world where you think that you're good and you're not gonna really be good then you're gonna be d3 and then the next thing you know you're gonna be like damn these dudes is really good not that d3 is bad i mean it, it is what it is d3 d2 whatever you make it to college you get a free education do your thing but what i'm saying is I, I know a lot of guys that went to D, D2 or D3 that I know could have gone D1 if they had been, you know, like we didn't have the programs and stuff. Uh, like my boy Yari Scott, one of the best players I ever played with. He could have gone D1 easily, but I think he went to Payne College. I think that's uh, two, uh, D2. But he could have gone D1 easily if we had better competition to play with, if we had AAU and stuff like that. So if you want your child to be able to, to push yourself to the next level, you got to play against better competition, man. It is what it is. You're not going to get better at something by not doing it. That's what I always say. Anyway, man, I don't talk too long in this video. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. And tell me how to get this crook out my neck. And if you put Witch Hazel and Tessa down there, you're getting bad. And I'm just joking with y'all, man. Y'all take it easy, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what y'all think. Call of Duty video. We probably put it up around about 3 o'clock. And I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time. That's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop. BK, the People's Champ. Godspeed.